Good morning, Mark. Out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, the 14th of September, 2017. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. First, let's take a look at what's going on in the eastern Pacific, where we have quadruplets to look at out here. First of all, an area that's not going to develop. And then we do have Tropical Depression 15E. We have another area that is going to develop later today. And then we have Max over here, pretty much on the coast of Mexico. And so if we look at the overall pattern of how things are shaping up, this one is the most concerning in terms of the highest impact, as it looks like it will develop and then affect the Baja potentially over the next several days. Now, obviously, Max coming on shore here in Mexico, bringing hurricane conditions. Obviously, hurricane warnings are up, and this will die out very quickly over the mountainous terrain there of southwestern Mexico, posing a significant flood risk. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the eastern Pacific there, like I said, with that other system uh, trying to develop, um, and it's going to be later today, so when I do the afternoon or early evening update, this will be named whatever the end storm is, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but we will be tracking it nonetheless. In the Atlantic, we, have, of course, have Hurricane Jose, and just as I uh, suspected, the forecast uh, is that it will weaken a little bit and then regain hurricane intensity up here over the warm water here of the western Atlantic and probably become a major hurricane again and keep adding to the ACE score, which is the overall energy output for the season, which is you know at least 127 points right now. Normally... We have anywhere from 93 to 104, just depending on what statistics you look at and what time frame. But an average season, you know, you could say it's around 100. And, and so think of that as a basketball team, a pro team, a college team, whatever, usually a pro team uh, that scores in the triple digits on, on average. And so you could say that whatever pro team, you know, averages 102 points a game uh, over the past 10 years. And so that's what the accumulated cyclone energy index is all about. In the Atlantic Basin, typically we get about 100 points per year, and we are already a full 127%. You know, we're basically 27% above normal. So there you go. We're, uh, and we still have a long way to go. So the track here for Jose, um, you can see that it still safely keeps it away from the United States, but this may be changing with time, and we will go through that in more detail in just a moment. In the meantime, the area out here in the main development region where sea surface temperatures are still warmer than normal, we have a couple of areas to watch when the Hurricane Center gives both of these a medium chance of developing over time. If we go back and look at the five-day outlook map, we can see that there's a couple of X's there now for the short term, but in the longer term, 60% chance that this will develop over time uh, and I think that's just going to go up. And you see the forecast uh, area of potential development through here. And so folks in you know, the Caribbean, once again, you're going to have to pay attention. Recovery efforts ongoing. The Greater Antilles through here. We really need to watch this system. Um, the pattern is going to be ripe over the northwest Atlantic with the pressures that this is probably not going to turn and just go out to sea. I don't see that happening, and I'll show you some evidence for that in just a moment. And then farther to the east, 40% chance that this develops, and we'll just wait and see what happens. It's going to be busy. I think we'll have these two, and then probably four more between now and the end of November. And four may be underdoing it. So we could have eight more name storms. Uh, I'm sorry, six more name storms total, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to get pretty far down the list. So hurricane season, by uh, any stretch, is not over. So, again, this is what they look like on satellite picture, the whole shot. A uh, little bit more energy over Africa. Sometimes you can't see the vorticity or the energy, but it's there. And eventually the Cape Bird season here will shut down, and these systems will not be as robust. And, you know, they'll be weaker, but then they get farther to the west like we saw last year. Uh, with Matthew, and we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of when Matthew's tropical wave, uh, you know, became a thing. And I'm going to talk about that later in the month if we have time. But
but nevertheless an active pattern over the Atlantic to be sure. Now, the National Hurricane Center Reynolds Method for Sea Surface Temperature Analysis gives us an idea of where the warm water is. And right up against the coastline here of the southeast, water temperatures have cooled off a little bit as of late. I suspect that they will rebound one or two degrees here over the next few days, the way the high pressure and everything is setting up. And now that the mess associated with Irma and all that just complete chaos is gone, the sea surface temperatures will have a chance to rebound. But make no mistake, there's plenty of upper ocean heat content through this area, meaning that the water is warm not only at the surface, but also fairly deep below that surface. Gulf of Mexico also fairly discombobulated, especially over here on the western side, and we owe that a lot to Harvey's existence. And it's interesting right up here in the Mississippi Sound and areas east of New Orleans, the Delta region, the water temperatures have cooled off substantially. And I'd have to go and look and see what the heck that's all about. Um, you know, that's too cold to go in, in my opinion, 24, 25 Celsius in mid-September. Something's wacky there. Uh, but that would be great for anything making landfall, potentially, because it would sap the energy from the core and keep the winds down. But just, you know, totally being speculative here that if, if something were to develop and come along and make landfall right across that, uh, you know, depending on how strong it is out here, unfortunately, you already have this massive surge built up and ready to come into the coast, and we saw that with Katrina. And so my point is, is not to frighten you or whatever, but you know, just because you see cooler sur surface temperatures in the shelf water, you can still have a very high impact event, even if you knock down one of the uh, impacts. In this case, it would be potentially the wind, but... You just never know. I'm not ever going to just assume anything. But it's just interesting to point these things out that, yeah, there's a pretty cold bullseye there. But then you see very noticeable area of 30 Celsius, and everything else here is 29C. Uh, so everything's warm except these little small pockets. So looking at the uh, infrared satellite loop this morning, uh, here is Jose still battling with the shear, but it's going to probably... Uh, let up eventually and this is going to turn the corner and very warm water waits for it up here in more favorable conditions and then these are the areas that we will be watching out in the Atlantic and I'll show you that on the modeling here coming up in just a minute and here's just another shot again showing you this green color through here right up against the coastline slightly cooler temperatures than we have seen as of late but all this yellow area through here and the Contour lines on this uh, don't give you the resolution to really zoom in and show you the details, but it's interesting just for what it's worth. The 26 degrees Celsius, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, is right here. So I'm just going to outline it in red. All right, this is like kindergarten where you try to stay within the lines, right? So there's the 26 C line, and as you can see, it's just offshore of the Carolinas, but. Uh, it's not that far away from southeast New England, and I'll show you why that's important here in just a moment. So let's take a look at last night's Euro. This is from tropicaltidbits.com. This is the Zero Z run, and you can see uh, the east coast of the U.S. right here. Let's draw it in yellow. The Carolinas and Florida. And here is Jose. And then you have the surface pressure, and then you have these troughs that show up here in the 500 millibar pattern. And these are superimposed on top of each other for ease of understanding. This is 24 hours, so this will be valid tonight. So this is Thursday night, the 14th here. This is Friday night, and this is Saturday night. And you can see that the European gets Jose fairly far back to the west here. This is more west than the Hurricane Center track is showing. Uh, it would be about due south of Atlantic City, New Jersey, maybe just a slight tick east of that but not on the same latitude, only longitudinally speaking. Uh, if we're going out to 96 hours, and then finally day five, uh, a couple things to notice is the Euro drops this down to 966 millibars. We're riding very close to the Gulf Stream there, and that's a curve, it shouldn't be, sorry. I don't want to be misleading, uh, either towards land or away. Uh, but yeah, it, it moves up over that warmer water, and so this is very likely to become a Category 3 again 
in my opinion, hey, we've already made it back to where the Hurricane Center shows it becoming a hurricane where it once was a tropical storm. So I think I'm on the right path there just from past experience and looking at the pattern and what it's going to be moving towards, etc. I think it's a good bet that this is a fairly decent intensity storm. At day six, as we play the what might happen in the future, I don't want to call it game because that sounds flippant, but the keys to what to look for. We know that the five-day forecast is at best uh, prone to 200 miles in, in error, and we saw how frustrating that was for Irma. So when we look at days six and or seven, please keep that in mind, okay? And we're just kind of looking to see what might happen. So let's just go back through the track here. This is day six. All right, so this is 24 hours, okay? And then, or is that the initial? Sorry, there's 24, 48, 72, 96, 120, 144. And then if we zoom out and just look at 168, that's an, uh, an entire week away. Just trying to get up here into the Gulf of Maine. It would be a shallower, less convective hurricane. Uh, so the rain and the wind, just don't think of this as your typical hurricane. And, and people up in New England and the Canadian Maritimes, you know this. But if this were to come to pass, you'd have a large wind field potentially and high impact, but we're not looking at the classic, like New England hurricane of 1938, where they come out of the deep tropics and then just run the coast, moving north-northeast at 20 knots. So it's a threat, and this is implying that we really need to watch this because, you know, even hurricane conditions here from the tropics in southeast New England could be very problematic. Uh, I have been up there for blizzards uh, since 2014, uh, and most recently one this past year right there in the Dennis area with some significant storm surge coming off of the bay from that nor'easter that came across. And that was incredible in and of itself. Very cold, obviously. So we're going to really need to watch this. you got a big population density in this region, obviously, and any tropical cyclone impacts uh, are going to potentially be problematic. And I mean, that sounds obvious, but I just don't want it to be dismissed on the one hand as well. The water temperatures are cold, so probably won't be too big of a deal. On the other hand, I don't want people to think that it's the same type of setup, uh, especially newcomers up there that, oh, they hear hurricane and they think that it's going to be exactly like we saw in Texas or in Florida with Harvey and Irma, respectively, and that's not the case either. Somewhere in the middle, but we'll talk about that if necessary. Uh, and then we have the GFS. This is also the 0 Z run, and let's put this into motion if it will allow me to. Try to click on the start button. So this will move by very quickly, but you see the idea. There's your ridging over here, and uh, Jose goes around the west side of that, and then it's able to catch a quick hook off to the northeast, as you see there, and miss everything. But, you know, 50 to 75 miles further to the west, and this is close enough to Hatteras, and certainly close enough, especially to the islands, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and Chatham, for example, that this could be very much worth keeping an eye on. And you also notice what starts to happen down here in the deep tropics with this energy right here. Watch it as it goes along. And by the seven-day time frame, this is through the islands and into the eastern Caribbean. So you folks in Barbados, uh, it's been a little bit of time since we've had to deal with anything. Just a heads up that uh, this might be coming your way over the next few days out of the deep tropics here. All right, so the islands... East coast of the U.S., especially Mid-Atlantic and New England, Hatteras North. You know, just a heads up. Don't get all excited or worried. And when I say excited, you know what I mean by that. That's not necessarily meaning uh, I'm excited because I'm going uh, to Disney World. It's not that kind of excitement. Um, so, uh, keep an eye on it. want to make sure you are aware. I am very proud that we now have the app uh, Hurricane Impact here not only on iPhone, but also now on Android in the Google Play Store. And um, I need to post a link to that because apparently it's hard to find uh, on Google Play. It's just 
sometimes I get frustrated at how simple things should be, but then they're not. Uh, so I'm going to post a link to this in the description, both apps, the iOS version and the Android, in this video. So if you want to get it, that's an easy way to do so. And I saw, I don't have an Android device, but I saw the Hurricane Impact in, uh, on a, an S8. What is that, a Samsung Galaxy S8? I hope I say that right. <laughs> I'm an iPhone user, but I'm not an iPhone fanboy. I just like my iPhone. But anyway, I said this yesterday, but I want to reiterate it, that when I saw it on this S8, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was just like an exact duplicate, about 97%. It was like looking at twins. You know, they're not 100% the same, but close enough. I was like, wow. So really, uh, our developer, Blue Tone Media, here in Wilmington, North Carolina, Thank you very much. You did a great job. So on the App Store, you can search Hurricane Impact. On Google Play, when I search for it, it says it's not available in my country yet. So that's weird. So I'm going to post a link to it directly in the description of this video. So maybe you can snag it that way. And we'll work on making it easier to search for. All righty. Well, that's it from me for now. This is the morning update. I'll do another one in the um, late afternoon or early evening, somewhere around there. And then we can take a look at the afternoon version of the mo morning model runs. Remember, they get initialized, and then they run for several hours on the supercomputers, and then we analyze them later. So even though it's afternoon when I do the next update, we'll be looking at the 12Z runs. Does that make sense? Hope so. Thanks, as always, for watching and tuning in. Of course, I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you again this afternoon.